Hi. Um, since this is my new magazine, I'm trying to read all, most of the articles out of it. And it's um, November, December 2019. And it's What Christmas Means to Me. And it's by Urban Baxter. It's not too long. And here it is. What Christmas Means to Me. As I saw all the Christmas lights, heard the Christmas carols, and observed all the celebrations, I paused to ask myself, what does Christmas really mean to me? I'm aware of the miracle of the virgin birth. I know about the angels appearing to the shepherds the night Jesus was born in Bethlehem. I've read about the wise men being led by the special star until they came to the place where the child Christ lay. I've heard about the miracles and the healings Jesus performed during his time on earth, but what did the coming of Jesus to the earth mean for me personally? One scripture answered my question and changed my life forever. It is found in 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us to us ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made righteous of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 17-21 When verse 17 says, I can become a new creature, does this literally mean Jesus Christ can turn a lost human being into a new person? Yes, it does, because it happened to me. I have never been the same since the day I was born again. I'm not talking about some kind of an imagined pseudo experiment experience. I'm talking about a genuine spiritual experience that happened to me on October 16th, 1958. It changed my life forever. Before I truly experienced Christ, I lived a life of condemnation and guilt. I thought God was angry with me and was anxious to punish me. But verse 18 said I could be reconciled to God. What does the word reconciled mean? I took some Latin when I was in school and I learned the Latin word Concilio means to bring together. The prefix re, re, means again. The word reconcile means to bring together again. All of us were separated from God by sin, but this scripture says we can be reconciled to God by Jesus Christ. How does that work? I found the big secret. It seemed like the harder I tried to find peace with God, the more I wrestled with condemnation. Then I found the big secret in verse 19. There it says, God reconciled us to himself by not imputing our trespasses to us. What does it mean when it says God will not impute our trespasses to us? The word impute means to place on the account of or to attribute to. The secret is that once we are in Christ, by being born again, God will no longer impute our trespasses to us. But that's not fair. How could that possibly be? Verse 21 explains it all. For he hath not, I'm sorry, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus never sinned 
but he loved us so much he volunteered for our sins to be imputed to him so that his righteousness could be imputed to us. Let's make it really simple. There was a law that ruled the human race from Adam until Christ. It was called the law of sin and death. It's defined in Ezekiel 18.4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of Son is mine, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. There it is, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. All of us lived under the law of sin and death. However, God loved us and didn't want us to die. Therefore, he designed a plan to save us from the law of sin and death. God said, I will become a man and will be tempted like every other human being. However, I will not yield to those temptations. I will live a sinless life. Consequently, I will not deserve to die, but I will trick Satan into killing me anyway. When Satan kills me, he will then have broken the law of sin and death, since only the souls that sin must die. Once the law of sin and death is broken by Satan, it will no longer be in force. Romans 8, 1 through 2 explains it this way. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. How does his death pay my sin bill? In Acts 2, the Apostle Peter was asked by the people what they must be what they must do to be saved in acts 2 38 he commanded them to repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost peter said that the baptism is for the remission of sins but what does the word remission mean the word remission comes from the word remit. When you receive a bill in the mail that says, please remit by the 10th of the month, what are they asking for? Payment? Payment. Peter commanded the people to be baptized for the remissions of sin. Baptism is for the remission of payment or payment for our sins. Romans 6 3 says know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto jesus christ were baptized into his death when we are baptized in the name of jesus at that moment his death pays our sin bill that means we don't owe the bill of sin any longer which is only paid by death Jesus paid our bill through his death. We now have the promise of eternal life. The answer is simple language, in simple language. God robed himself in a human body at Bethlehem. He lived a sinless life and then chose to die in my place. That means I don't have to die and I, know, I now have the wonderful gift of eternal life. That's what Christmas means to me. Wow, beautiful. All right. Well, thanks for watching.